Welcome back, Blade Gang. This old sword is with you today and hopefully for the foreseeable future. <laughs> We've got a brand new Vostied knife. I picked this one up quickly from White Mountain Knives because they went very quickly. And hopefully they are available elsewhere. I will leave you some links. This is the Thunderbird. And it's a beauty. They are referring to it in some of their descriptive stuff about it as a Tonto. I only see it as a Tonto in terms of that um, compound grind you see. So we do have a hollow. And we do have a flat. And we've got a very pronounced fuller, an opening hole. And yes, it is a button lock. Check it out. We're going to talk more about that button lock in a moment. But look at three ways of opening. A back flipper, a front flipper, a hole opener, and even the fuller. Uh, the detent is not very strong. I think it was tuned that way, partially because button locks tend not to have strong detents. Maybe sometimes they do. Well, this one doesn't. But when you're talking about middle finger flick and you're talking about rolling it open with the thumb and you're talking about front flipping it and back flipping it, you have to have kind of a compromise on that uh, detent. I'm going to go through the specs that Vostid provides since they're so complete and rarely are the, uh, the specs so complete, but I'll show you the screen and I'll also read them off in just a moment. So they pretty much give you everything here. All right, so we've got on this knife an overall length of two, uh, 8.2 inches or uh, 208 millimeters. It's got a blade length of 3.48 inches or 88 millimeters. We have a blade thickness of 3 millimeters or 0.118. The steel is S35VN. That's kind of a jump up for them. They've been doing 154CM. They've been doing Sandvik and so forth. HRC is listed as 60 plus or minus 2. And if that sounds like a wide range for you, I'm told they can't always nail the HRC, but Maybe there are production methods that would allow them to. The grind is compound hollow, and they call it a harpoon tip in their description, in the specs rather. And then they call it a handle, they call it, oh, I'm reading this. <laughs> they call it um, a tanto in their description. It's a deep carry clip, and the designer is U, Y-U-E. I think he goes by Dr. E-D-C. Now, um, trying to get to a little bit about it. So you can see there that they say it has what they're calling a Trek lock. And then they're here, they're talking about... Um, Tonto has superior piercing performance. So they call it a harpoon, modified harpoon, and they call it a Tonto. But we can discuss that in a moment as well. But let me talk a little bit about the lock on this. And I'm reading again off of their description. Notice you can't see that lock and it's farther forward. You can't see it, the plunge lock from the top. Right? And so... It's a Trek lock patent pending. It's an innovation that perfectly combines multi-deployment options, thumb hole, thumb stud, front flipper, normal flipper with a reliable and intuitive locking mechanism. No more thumb in the closing path. Always more ways to play with it. And the mechanism can reduce unintended lock accidents. That to me is a highlight. So, um, 
Sorry for pulling that out of the frame. Got to get my phone back in the pocket. So yeah, the Trek lock, right? Um, for comparison, here is the raccoon, something they came out with earlier. And you can see with the raccoon that, let's see if I can get them both in the frame here, that you've got the uh, button set further back and there is a recess for it. Now there's a slight recess here for this one, but if we look at them both in the open position, you can see that this is far more proud of the handle than on the raccoon. It sticks way out. And again, it's going, and I haven't disassembled it by any means, but um, my guess is that that plunge lock is going through the blade at a point rather than blocking the blade where you can see the plunge lock here. Some people have mentioned that the raccoon had uh, auto closing, <laughs> for lack of a better word, uh, properties in that it was closing when they didn't want to. You can see that if you're gripping it and maybe you press your thumb a little bit here, that it doesn't take too much to disengage the lock. Now trying the same thing with the Thunderbird. Pushing, 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 and finally it breaks. So there is a long throw to it, and it doesn't disengage until it gets very close to being all the way in, all right? I don't know why the camera's having a focus problem today. Make an adjustment and come right back. Well, I did want to show you this. I've kind of inserted this section into the video. Um, I had meant to show you what nice presentation and uh, case they give you boxing case with Vostid. I mean, um, nice little pouch. Certainly a lot of knife companies give you pouches. You got some Velcro there in case you want to add uh, some additional patches, but the Vostid one is sewn in. And <clears throat> Vostid always gives you, no matter what the price point is with their knives, this aluminum tin. And here we have the really cool Thunderbird patch, nicely done, rubber patch, you know, not cheap. <laughs> got the uh, hook and loop on the back. We've got um, a, uh, wow, got a Thunderbird logo there. Got another one here. I mean, got a microfiber cloth. They give you the works. I mean, you don't even get this from like Wii any longer. Speaking of Wii, uh, quick comparison here with a recently released knife by LTK Knives that I did a review on. Also a button lock. <clears throat> and I was saying in the review on this one, what a great job they did protecting the button. And you got to really dig your finger in in order to release that button. Uh, this accomplishes that a little differently with that um, Trek lock that they're talking about. Um, with this one, it's mainly that you need to push it further as opposed to having it protected. I would say if you wanted a comparison that I prefer the work they did on the button lock on the LTK result here. But just showing you that for a comparison, if you want to know more about this one, I do have a independent review out there. They're both the same size knives, right about uh, three and a half inches. So there you go with that. We'll see if that works. I think what I had it on was centralized focus. Yeah, that's a lot better. Um, so we've got a plunge lock going through the blade, I'm guessing, at some point. All right. And when the knife is closed, that lock is further in than when the knife is open. At any rate, um, 
we do have a pin here, but that is looks like a support pin. And we're going to look around the knife a little bit more. It comes in several different handle flavors. And this one is kind of a swirl. Um, I know what Hogue calls theirs g Mascus, but this has a different name. And, um, well, I'm not going to get into that. You'll probably see it in the uh, various models that are available at White Mountain. There's a plate there for your uh, transfer of the clip to the left side. So you lefties are in luck. It's got uh, kind of a gold anodized, is it steel? Yeah, I think it's steel. Could be aluminum. Didn't get a lot of draw from the magnet there. And it's sort of a copper color, I would call it, to somewhat match the red and black of the G10 swirled handle. These are becoming very popular, and there's a number of different patterns. I know that um, Off Grid has one they call uh, Red Dawn, and that they do make that sort of pattern in uh, the Thunderbird as well. Got pretty much wide open construction, except for that short backspacer. And we've got a nicely provisioned lanyard pin that's hidden. So you don't have any interruption, any holes in the handle. We've got uh, grooves or fullers down the handle here. And again, I think what they wanted to do by placing this further forward is when you pinch it, your fingers are out of the way. Um, if it's back here and you pinch it, your finger can be in the way. So that could be what they're talking about and that it's safer. And I do see that it does not close as easily as the raccoon. The opening hole can be used for your middle finger flick, but so can the fuller, your choice. You can snap it open with the thumb with that same hole. You can roll it open with the thumb with that same hole. And we've got a very nice finger choil here. Nice jimping, grippy. I can place my thumb all the way out on that ramp, but the jimping runs about, oh, two thirds of that ramp and is like three quarters overall. Nice jimping right on the button. And um, a hollow grind, as I said in here, that runs a little less than halfway up the blade. So uh, you're not going to get that high flat grind, but you're going to get a pretty strong edge. And you're going to get a pretty strong tip here. Again, they were able to accomplish the compound grind without that defined tanto point, kind of like what you see on uh, some of the Chavez designs made by Riot. Uh, they make a pronounced tanto one, and they make one that they call a drop point. Beautiful blade. Um, Three and a half inch range is nice. I always like a little larger, but you can see by no means is this a small knife. And um, the only thing they didn't give us is the thickness, or at least I couldn't find the handle thickness. So we're going to grab that right now. Oh yeah, 0.47. So under a half inch, very comfy. Uh, some of you guys with bigger hands, it may feel kind of small for you but I think it's a good size for a working knife. And there it is once again, alongside the raccoon. It's a longer knife by close to an inch longer than the raccoon, which some of you felt maybe was a little small. And next to the griptilian, we're talking right about the same, right about the same overall length and right about the same blade length as a griptilian. So a griptilian sized knife, right around three and a half inches. It's a beauty and uh, they're going for about, I think 135. You can get 10% off at White Mountain if you use my discount code Old Sword, and that's off your entire order. I'm liking this knife. It's um, good to look at, it's functional. It's got some very good EDC potential. 
excellent steel S35 VN. And, you know, certainly as always, you decide. I'm not pushing it or dinging it. I think it's, uh, personally, I like it. And uh, it's one of uh, five Vosteeds I've done reviews on now. So you can check out the others. Be well, take care. Don't forget to give this vid a like and subscribe. This old sword will be back with you soon.